Well, the primary is behind us, which means the midterm election is just three months away now. And we want to dig into it with former state Senator Buzz Thomas, now with Thomas Group Consulting. Tori Sachs is executive director of the Michigan Freedom Fund. You know Jill Alper of Alper Strategies. And Jason Rowe is from Rowe Strategic. Welcome, everybody. Glad to have you here this morning. Uh, I, I kind of want to just dive into the governor's race here and just almost like a thought exercise. You guys all know what it's like to be immersed in some of these campaigns. Put yourself in these, each of these, and what would you focus on? What would you stay away from? Jason, I'm going to start with you. You're running either of these campaigns, maybe both. What, what do you see the key being here? Well, I think for Tudor Dixon, who's an unknown commodity to most of the electorate, I think she's got to get out there quickly and define herself because Gretchen Whitmer raised close to $30 million. There's going to be a lot of outside money that comes in for her trying to define Tudor. So if I'm Tudor, i got to figure out how to get out there and define myself quickly before I'm defined by my opponent. And then you have to dig out of, of a deficit uh, when it comes to your impressions. And then, we, as we saw, Joe, that already really kind of happened. The uh, Democrats came right out and uh, with an abortion kind of uh, attack on Tudor Dixon. Um, if you're running the governor's campaign, uh, do you stay on that focus? Well, I think that they are moving quick to define what is a very extreme candidacy on an issue of tremendous importance to Michiganders who are very middle of the road, very common sense, want their rights, want their freedom to make the decisions that, that they want to make. I, I don't know how Tudor Dixon does redefine herself, though, because she had to move so far to the right to get this nomination. So if, if I'm her, that's, that's what I've got to do to win, but I don't know how I do that. Tori, you've run a couple campaigns. Uh, what's your move once? Because you, you got to think three months, and it's got to be a sprint starting now. Every day has to matter, I would think. Yeah, absolutely. But look what Gretchen Whitmer is doing. She's desperate to talk about anything other than the issues, anything other than inflation, anything other than the uptick in crime. Michigan's crime rate is rising twice as fast as the national average. Um, Detroit with car break-ins, um, small crimes across the state, huge uptick. Governor Whitmer is desperate to talk about anything other than that. And that's why they are talking about abortion, which, by the way, abortion is going to be on the ballot. People are going to be able to choose if they want to support abortion up until birth. That is on the ballot. And then the governor's race is going to be about things like inflation, crime, and education. Buzz, when you look at this race, what, what do you, where do you see it going from here? Where does it, uh, I mean, we've already said, like I said, the first shots have been fired and we're off to the races already. Well, it's a fascinating and historic race. I love that you have uh, both parties nominating women uh, for the first time. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's, that, I think that's a part of the story and it will be a part of the, a part of the election and, and the story that will be told after the election. I think if you're Governor Whitmer, you continue along the path that you're going, uh, talk about the successes that you had and talk about your, uh, your, 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 your dream dreams and aspirations for uh, Michigan over the next four years. For uh, for the Dixon campaign, I think they do have uh, a, a challenge, as Jill uh, mentioned, of uh, walking back uh, some of the places that they had to go to win uh, to win a, a Trumpish uh, primary. Uh, and so, you know, there's some inconsistencies in positions that were staked out during that uh, during that primary that she's going to have to reconcile uh, to uh, to draw the connection with uh, the voters that are going to be real critically important from Oakland County to Kent County along that I-96 corridor. And, and Gretchen should focus on dreams because there is no record of accomplishment. I mean, she ran on fixing the damn roads. She's done absolutely nothing. Uh, she mocked Bill Schuette when he suggested during a debate that she would raise the gas tax by 20 cents a gallon, and then she turned around and within the first few months of her administration tried to raise gas taxes by 45 cents a gallon. Can you imagine if she had been successful given what we're dealing with gas prices and inflation in today's economy? She talked about transparency, a, a range of issues. If you go back and look at the promises she made in 2018, she has accomplished exactly nothing, and if not for the Supreme Court decision on Roe v. Wade, she would have nothing to talk about. Jason, there I don't know, what, what what road did you drive into this station on? Um, well, I, luckily I, I, they weren't I, I, flooded. I did you see? Did you watch road. the show? I, I was, did you watch I was the dodging barrels all the way. Did you watch the show two nights ago? The road it's road flooding season. Working folks. On, Mich on Michigan roads today, um, and there are over 900 uh, bipartisan bills that have been signed. The other day, Michigan was named the state with the fastest growing economy. In Washington, there was you know there's developing news here, but there's a big package that will is designed to to address 
inflation that's going to mean action on climate and um, it's going to reduce the price of prescription drugs because now we can negotiate for Medicare. Um, I, I, th I think it's astonishing to say that, to, to, that these claims are being made. Right. Sure, Anyone that thinks that this. spending more money, more government money is going to solve inflation has not been paying attention to how, what has created inflation over the last two years, right? The Democrats cannot spend their way out of this. Joe Biden is more unpopular now than President Trump ever was. So if you would like to talk about President Trump, hey, I'd love to go back to 239 a gallon of gas. I was on a different show last night with a Democratic Congresswoman who told me we should be thankful for 399 gas. That's the Democrat message. That's why they're so desperate to talk about anything other than the economy, anything other than education, and let's talk about how our kids who are locked out of schools longer than anywhere in the country are far behind any other state. Our children are behind. I am a mother. Tudor is a mother of four girls. She understands that. She resonates with the people. She knows what issues we care about at home. Well, Buzz, do you think the governor has to? She's always been closely aligned to the president. Obviously, his numbers are down. He's fighting the inflation battle right now. Does she have to try and distance herself, or can she stay aligned with him in a way and be successful? I think she can uh, stay aligned and she can she can continue on the course that she's uh, charted for Michigan. She can control what she can control uh, and she's in charge of issues that uh, that she can grapple with. Uh, and I'm sure that she'll let Joe Biden do his job in Washington and she'll continue to do her job here in Michigan. You know, it wasn't that long ago she was riding with Biden and now she's hiding from Biden. <laughs> like when he came to the state, she was out in Los Angeles raising money. She has avoided him like the plague. And I would love her to attach herself because that's where she belongs because when she was auditioning for uh, vice president, when she kept trying to outdo Gavin Newsom and uh, Cuomo and uh, Pritzker in Illinois over who could impose the most draconian lockdowns during COVID in order to get the VP nom nomination, uh, she attached herself to the hip with him. And then ever since then, as his numbers plummeted, all of a sudden she doesn't know his name. Well, well did, somebody we brought up Trump a few times. Do we expect him to make uh, have a role in this election? Election, or is it uh, is it smart for Tudor Dixon to distance herself from him going forward now? President Trump is much more popular than Joe Biden is. So if this is, but this is about Whitmer and Dixon. Um, but if I was Gretchen Whitmer, I'd be worried about my attachment to Joe Biden. Um, but it wasn't long ago, and I, I want to take us back to that because when Whitmer was auditioning to be the vice president with Biden, she locked the state down. She told everybody to stay home. Uh, and she was traveling, right? She was campaigning. She was going to Florida. She was at the bar with her friends when people couldn't have funerals. Tomorrow would have been my brother's 32nd birthday. He died a year and a half ago, and we could not have a funeral for him, but she could go to the bar. She could go to Florida, and, but it was unsafe somehow for us to have a funeral for my brother. And we're not the only family. There's a lot of families who experience that, who couldn't be with their loved ones when they died in nursing homes. And people in Michigan are not going to forget that. Uh, real quick, we got a little bit of time left in this segment. Uh, Jill, I'll start with you. Uh, we heard Tudor Dixon's first speech. It was kind of the greatest hits, uh, focusing on uh, Gretchen Whitmer across the board. Um, do you expect that to continue? or And this is for everybody. She's going to have to focus on something specific. Yeah, I, I, I mean, she's just, it's a hard right move. But still, I don't understand how that gets a majority of Michiganders to vote for her. All I will say is that um, I don't know how Gretchen Whitmer passed a budget in June without the Republicans agreeing, which never happens in an election year. I don't know how she signed into law 900, over 900 bipartisan um, pieces of legislation, including the largest investment in education um, and roads and all of the rest, um, if the Republicans in the state legislature didn't agree with what she wanted to do for the state. so. Um, you know, the, the, all of what we're talking about is in the rearview mirror. The state's moving yeah. ahead, and the crisis around COVID um, was managed with Michigan uh, starting with the worst problem and, and ending up in a place where l less li lives were lost. I'm we shocked lost to learn more that lives she's per capita than any other state. I'm shocked to learn that she's bipartisan in an election year. I'm stunned. I, I mean, for four years, the polling years, she data. The this. polling she data. She always to do follows it the polling only when data. she's up for re-election. I'm about to lose control, so we'll have to let that be the last <laughs> word for this segment. We'll continue this discussion though. In moments. Boy, what you missed in the commercial break. It was wild. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we want to talk about the congressional races now with our panels. Redraw
drawn districts for the first time. Were there any, and statewide, there was a lot of action. Buzz, what was your biggest takeaway? Big takeaways, um, I, was, I was very surprised that uh, Peter Meyer lost. Uh, I really thought that uh, he would win. I mean, who doesn't know the name Meyer? Uh, and the Dems went after them. Uh, the, after him, though. Yeah, and uh, yeah, wouldn't have been wouldn't have been how I would have spent spent my money. Uh, and then I was also, um, uh, you know, I'm disappointed that Detroit will not have African American representation. Um, I love her. She did sleep. Um, uh, I, I I don't really know uh, uh, Congressman elect or or that our nominee uh, Sri Janadar, uh, but I do know Portia Roberson and Adam Olier really well. Um, and so you know, I I think that the end of black representation uh, after 50, 60 years in Detroit is a big story. Yeah, I, I agree. Tori, what was your biggest takeaway uh, from the, the congressional races? Look, Michigan is the path to take back the House for Republicans nationally. Right, we're going to flip a seat with John James and Macomb County, uh, who may end up being the only black congressman from Michigan now, thanks to the Democrat redistricting uh, committee's final report. Um, but we also have Paul Young, who's going to be very competitive against uh, Congressman Kildee. And um, we have Tom Barrett, who is in a great position to defeat Alyssa Slotkin uh, in the Livingston Lansing area. So the path to Congress, the path to really reducing inflation, to making our country more secure, to getting us back on track, uh, nationally goes through Michigan, and that's really exciting. You're stealing my next question, by the way, just about where we look in the general, how close these will be. Um, Jill, what was your biggest, uh, was there any surprises to you in the congressional races? Uh, and, I, and we look at uh, Andy Levin versus Haley Stevens. I don't know how many people thought that might go the other way, but that was obviously a big race. Yeah, it was a big race, and I think that um, Congressman uh, Levin was, was just very upstanding in saying that he was going to keep working and supported Haley in her win. A lot of that district um, was her district is her district which um, she's represented well so unfortunately we had to we had to take one for the team so to speak mm -hmm. in Michigan for redistricting but I mostly I, I very much agree with what Buzz had to say. Jason uh, any big shockers or everything play out the way you thought? To me the fact that the Republican Party is the one that's advancing two black candidates for Congress and the Democratic Party is advancing three. zero. Three, Jason. Uh, three, you're right. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we're, um, I mean, to me, there's been a big shift over the last few years in, in, within the black community, the Latino community, and even the LGBT community. And say what you will about Donald Trump, but I think the Democrats, as they've, as they've embraced this progressive elitism, they've left a lot of working class people behind, and a lot of those people are looking around saying, that's not a party that matches my values. And I think Republicans are are going to make a lot of inroads with uh, communities the, that historically we have the bigger, not. The bigger issue here, though, just respectfully, is that these are low turnout affairs. And that's the issue, is that both parties can move to the extreme. And I think in the case of these districts, the person who emerged, right, from especially in Grand Rapids, is a right-wing um, candidate. We the need Democrats, more people to vote Democrats so that the nominated. people, for the people who, for the people who are um, um, nominated to be nominated by um, representative um, voters in their district. And I think turnout is a really, in democracy, is a really important, and um, it's a mo an important moment for democracy. It's an important moment for democracy. And at the end of the day, as, as, as an African-American who's an LGBTQ uh, community member as well, um, which you guys are selling, we're not going to be buying uh, at, when, well, when, the, when the it's all said. And, and most African-American leaders I know would not agree with the, the, yeah. that representation either. Yeah. Well, that's where the poll shows. That's what's happening. Republicans have three black candidates uh, running for Congress, and the Democrats have. It's zero. circumstantial, but it doesn't necessarily mean yeah, that they're sure represented the black community by the feels community. It's very circumstantial when that they have no representation at point in this. That's delegation. not what I'm saying. I think they think it's very circumstantial, and so do Buzz and I. It's the people who are emerging to represent the community, the claims that are being made. The community leaders I know, particularly in Detroit, would not say that these people represent them. That's correct. I'm going to let that be the last word, everybody. Guys, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate the discussion.